care provided for their children to make to add to their children's well-being. Question number nine, the Honourable Mark Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Justice. Does he stand by all of his government's justice policies and decisions? The Honourable Andrew Little. Yes. Does he stand by his statement that the three strikes law is an absolutely absurd law, the high water mark of policy stupidity? Yes. What is his view of the statement made by New Zealand First Justice spokesperson Derek Ball, who said in relation to the three strikes reform, the law provides a firm framework to deter recidivism? And a, a, clear a point of order, the right honourable Winston Peters. The minister is not responsible, Mr. Speaker, for uh, Mr. Ball's views at all. Mm. That, 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 that's a fair comment. I apologise for uh, for letting the question run. Okay, I'll let the member rephrase it. Question: Has the justice minister seen any reports or um, press releases from New Zealand First Justice spokesperson Derek Ball, who has said in relation to the three strikes reform? The law provides a firm framework to deter recidivism and sends a clear message to our most serious offenders. A, a point of order, Chris Hipkins. Mr Speaker, I think the question was closer, but the Minister has no responsibility for press releases issued by another yeah. political party. Yeah, but, but the question wasn't that, it was whether he'd seen it or not. That's right. And, and uh, uh, we've had a number of instances today where supplementary questions have asked ministers if they've seen reports. I, I, am, I am just going to take the opportunity to say, though, that, uh, and I'll say it in particular and draw the attention of Amy Adams, um, there's been a little bit of a growing habit, which I've been slack about, uh, about asking ministers to comment uh, on, uh, without asking if they've seen reports. I'm, and the, the wording, uh, which I let through for her question number three today, uh, and, and a number of supplementaries uh, is going to be slightly tightened on up on going forward. And I'll be happy to discuss it, or the clerk's office will be happy to discuss it uh, with people responsible for, for lodging questions. We are going to be tighter uh, about ministerial responsibility, especially for, for primary questions. Now, uh, I, the me member can remember the question. Andrew Little. Uh, yes, Mr Speaker, I have seen that report. <laughs> Point of order, Mr. Speaker. A point of order, Mark Mitchell. Maybe I should have included uh, the first part of the question. No, what no, you got you, you. What was you, his view you had of the a, report? You had a chance of rephrasing. You rephrased it, and you've had a full answer, not just addressing a full answer. Supplementary. What's his view of the report? A point of order, the Honourable Chris Hopkins. Mr. Speaker, the minister may have seen it. It doesn't mean he has responsibility for it, and therefore being asked his view on it is outside of his ministerial responsibility. Yeah. Speaking to the point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brown. In the previous question, there was a question to the Transport Minister asking him what the alternatives would be uh, if there was not a fuel tax. And the minister chose to answer that, so presumably he had read some information that gave him uh, the... the, the uh, uh, information he needed to answer that. The question here to Mr Little is simply, uh, now that there's been acknowledgement that uh, he has seen the report, presumably he's read it, does he have a view on it? Now, that's not unreasonable. I, I, it's, it's absolutely. I mean, the, the idea that a minister can't have an opinion on something in his portfolio that he's read uh, is, is, would be protecting a minister too much. The Honourable Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My view is that that is Mr Ball's genuinely held view. Supplementary. To the Minister. Did he advance his Cabinet paper, which included the repeal of three strikes legislation, through the correct process, including Cabinet Committee, with the support of New Zealand First? Mr Speaker, the position that we got to last week was that I made the decision to withdraw the paper and any further reference to the full Cabinet. The reality is, when it comes to government policy, it is the final decision of Cabinet that matters, and that is what has happened in the last few days. Point of order, Mr Speaker, if I could seek your guidance on this, that was a very clear question, uh, short and concise. Uh, I don't think the Minister has actually answered uh, ask, ask it again and, we'll, and I'll, I'll make it. Did he advance his Cabinet paper, which included the repeal of the three strikes legislation, through the correct process, including Cabinet Committee, with the support of New Zealand First? 
Mr Speaker, the paper went through all relevant stages until last week when I made the judgment to withdraw the paper from final Cabinet consideration uh, because that is the way government decision-making works. Supplementary. Is he relieved to hear in the House today the Deputy Prime Minister state on behalf of the Prime Minister that three strikes is still on the table? Well, Mr. Speaker, it's another question of relief. Order, um, order. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to get to cut the member down now and ask the member to start again. The, the question, the answer was the Prime Minister stating, right? And I'll get the member to rephrase it. It's important that we get these things right because we're about to have a change. Is he relieved to hear in the House today the Prime Minister state that three strikes is still on the table? Uh, Mr Speaker, it's not a question of being relieved about anything that the Prime Minister or the Deputy Prime Minister standing in for the Prime Minister has said or believes. The Deputy Prime Minister is a man of considerable and astute wisdom, and he has brought that to bear in his answers to the House today, and he is right. Question number 10, Joe Luxon. Uh, to the Minister of